Try drawing the resonance structure that is dictated by these electron pushing arrows. We always start by redrawing the original picture. What do we do after we've redrawn the original picture? This is very important. We check to make sure that we redrew it correctly. I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but it bears repeating. Anytime you copy a structure, the first thing you have to do is check to see if you miscopied it in any way. Always make sure you're checking each of your drawings. Well, uh, I think this is correct. Okay, so we checked. Now we go arrow by arrow. Here's the initial tail. Uh, it's coming from this negative charge, which indicates that we're moving a lone pair. The lone pair wasn't drawn, so we don't need to erase it. Because we're at the initial tail, we have to change a charge. This carbon is starting with a negative charge and is losing electrons, so it becomes neutral. Now we can erase that tail. This head indicates that we form a pi bond. Now that we're in the middle of the string of arrows, we don't need to change charges. We erase the head. This tail indicates that we are moving a pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. No need to change charges, we erase that tail. This head indicates that we're forming a pi bond. No need to change charges, we erase that head. This tail indicates that we're moving this pi bond. No need to change charges, we erase that tail. This head indicates we're forming a pi bond. Draw the pi bond. No need to change charges, erase the head. This tail is coming from the pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. Still no need to change charges. We're still in the middle of the string of arrows, so we erase that tail. Now we're at the final head. This head is pointing directly at this oxygen, which indicates that we're forming a lone pair. We're not going to draw the lone pair, but because we're at the final head, we have to adjust the charge. The oxygen started with a zero formal charge, and it's gaining electrons, so it must have become negative. And now we're entitled to erase that final head. What's the next step? The next step is obviously to check that the net charges balance. Well, here we have a negative, a negative, and a positive. Negative 1, negative 1, plus 1. That gives us a net charge of negative 1. And in this picture, we have a negative 1, a plus 1, and a negative 1. Negative 1, plus 1, and negative 1. The net charge in the right-hand structure is also negative 1. The fact that we have the same charges indicates that we've drawn this correctly. Now, notice uh, a couple things here that didn't change. For example, the charge on this oxygen didn't change. Now, it's pretty obvious that the charge on the oxygen is not going to change. I hope it was obvious to you, because there's no arrows in the vicinity of this oxygen. We only make the changes that are dictated by the arrows. No arrows around the oxygen, so no changes in its charge. But you might have been a little surprised that the nitrogen's charge didn't change. Well, we shouldn't be too surprised because the nitrogen is in the middle of the string of arrows. Remember, we always change only two charges. We always change the charge of the atom at the initial tail. That was this one here. And the atom at the final head. Well, the atom at the final head was not the nitrogen. It was the oxygen. So there was no reason to change the charge on the nitrogen. You can see that again. You can see the nitrogen is gaining a pi bond from this head and losing a pi bond from this tail. So there's no reason to change its charge. Again, this is the type of problem that a beginning student often gets wrong if they just use the draw what feels good technique. If they're just drawing what feels good, they might easily change some charges um, that they shouldn't. So instead, the technique we want to use is working meticulously with one part of each arrow at a time. Try this example. Start by redrawing. What's the next step after we redraw? The next step is to check to make sure that we redrew correctly. Then we deal with the arrows. The initial tail is coming from this lone pair. Now in this case, the lone pair was drawn in, so we do need to erase that lone pair because it's being moved. And because we're at an initial tail, 
um, we need to change this charge. This oxygen started neutral and is losing electrons, so the oxygen ends up with a positive charge. Now we can erase that tail. On to the next head. This head is in the middle of a sigma bond, indicating that we're making a pi bond. We have to draw that pi bond. Now that we're in the middle of the string of arrows, we're not changing any charges. We can erase the head. This tail is coming from a pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. No need to change charges, we can erase that tail. This head is pointing to the middle of the um, sigma bond, so we form a pi bond. And because we're at the final head, we do have to change a charge. What's the atom at the final head? Well, not this one. This one is still in the middle of the arrows. You can see that more clearly here. This is still in the middle of the arrows with a tail on one side and a head on the other. This is the atom that's really at the end of the string of arrows. So this atom is going to have its charge change. It's starting positive and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes neutral. And now we can erase that head. What's the next step? check that the nut charges balance. Here we have a net charge of plus one, and in the right-hand picture we also have a net charge of plus one, so the charges balance. A couple things to notice here. Um, notice that in this case, um, we did an example where the initial lone pair was drawn in. Well, if the initial lone pair is drawn in, if it's at a, a tail, you have to erase it when you move that lone pair. Also, um, notice that we're not forming any, um, we're not forming a lone pair with this head. Suppose that this head was pointing directly at this atom. If this head had been pointing directly at this atom, then we would be forming a lone pair on this atom. Now that would be a completely legal um, uh, resonance structure. Maybe not all that significant in this case, but it would be legal. We could put this head on this atom, and then we'd be forming a lone pair on this atom. But no, instead, we put the head in the middle of the sigma bond. That means we're forming the pi bond. It looks like in this example, uh, we, went, we went back to a, uh, for a second to doing resonance structures with only two electron pushing arrows. Um, but the key thing here is not to change anything that doesn't have an arrow. So notice all this interesting stuff at the bottom of the structure. Uh, we got an oxygen double bond, a carbon double bond, a chlorine, but none of that stuff changed. We only changed the things that are the heads and tails of arrows. Try this example. Start by redrawing your picture. After you redraw, remember to check that you redrew correctly. Now let's deal with the arrows. The initial tail is coming from the negative charge, which indicates that we're moving a lone pair. Since we haven't drawn the lone pair, we don't need to erase it. We're at an initial tail, so we need to change the charge. The oxygen started negative and it's losing electrons, so it's going to become neutral. Remember, anything that's at a tail is losing electrons, and anything that's at, at a head is gaining electrons. That should really just be common sense at this point, because remember, the arrows tell us about how the electrons are moving. The electron pushing arrows tell us how the electrons are moving. The tail is where the electrons are moving away from, and the head is where they're moving to. So anything that's at an initial tail is losing electrons. Now this head indicates we're forming a pi bond. We're in the middle of the arrows now, so we're not changing charges. We erase that head. This tail indicates that we're erasing the pi bond. No need to change charges, erase the tail. This head is forming a pi bond. No need to change charges, erase the head. This tail um, is coming from a pi bond, so we can erase that tail. No need to change any charges, we erase the tail. Now we're at the final head, which is pointing directly at this oxygen. When the head is pointing directly at an atom, it indicates we're forming a lone pair. We don't draw the lone pair, we won't draw the lone pair, but because we're at the final head, we need to change the charge. Well, this oxygen started neutral, and the head indicates that it's gaining electrons, so it becomes negative. And then we can erase that head.
Next step, check that the net charge is balanced. There's a negative one charge on the left and a negative one charge on the right, so those balance.